Dearly beloved of the Lord, praise the Lord, praise his name. I'm so happy, happy, happy to interact with you again and we appreciate God all the time for this opportunity that has given us to interact through this avenue. And I'm glad that we shall continue on God being our helper because he's the one who gives the wisdom, he's the one who gives the life, He's the one who gives the ability. He's the one who gives the opportunity that actually his people, we, can actually interact together, share together, pray together. Because a family that prays, that stays, that prays together, stays together. Or the other way, the family that stays together, prays together, or prays together, stays together. And so we shall continue praying together because we must grow from one level of strength to another. And so we pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity as a family, sharing together as a family, reading together as a family, praying together as a family. We pray the Lord you'll continue strengthening us in your word as we share every moment in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we continue on what we started. And of course, Biblical personalities have encouraged me a great deal. And the reason why I keep referring to them, because like I've always said, there were human beings, there were men and women like us, but God chose to use them. And the way God used them, remember God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And that is his word. And since he remains the same yesterday, the same those hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years ago, he is the same today. And so can he catch something small in you? Can he catch something in me? And so that's, that's something that he catches, he uses it for the glory of his name, but also for my benefit. The glory returns to God, but the benefit is mine. I want to repeat that one, that everything that we do that glorifies God, the glory returns to God, the benefit is our benefit because it brings us life, it brings us joy, it brings us excitement, it, be, it brings us peace. And so that actually we live in harmony with him and with other people. And so friends, the person that we started on is prophet Hosea. Hosea is one of the Minor prophets. Minor in a way. They actually, they wrote little volumes, but important, messageful. And Hosea, in his book, those that actually put it together, put 14 chapters. And so as you go down, as we shall be continuing, you will find actually, uh, we shall be catching on, on and on and on and on. And so, Hosea, and when I looked through the writings, his name means salvation. And what is God's greatest desire for us? Right from the creation story, follow it. Go through Bible pages. In its entirety is God to retrieve mankind, to save mankind. He began his creation, but along the way, we deviated. But even then, God has continually, continually, persistently and lovingly followed man. That you return, that you return. And we are going to base on this book of Hosea and rebuild our relationship with God our Father. And also Hosea means salvation. And as we saw in the first episode that we talked about, we talked about Hosea. The whole thing was about his marriage life. But you realize that this whole 14 chapters were divided into two parts. The very first part of Hosea's book, which you needed to know, is that there are chapters one to three and about Hosea's wayward life. 
we were the wife I mean wife who was Gomer the wife that he married on instruction the wife that he married God demanding that go and marry a prostitute go and marry a, a woman of Adam and Hosea accepted what God instructed him to do he went and did that and so we pick a lesson from there as well how do you respond to God's word? How do you respond to God's message? How do you respond? Is it in obedience? Is it in disobedience? So Hosea chose, like we can choose, like I can choose to follow every detail that God speaks to us. Because there's nothing that God does, there's nothing that God says that is for our detriment. Everything that God does for us is messageful. It leads to something. And so God did this with Hosea to be message to the people of Israel at that time. And many things, there are also circumstances that happen in our life. When you are intentional, everything, God speaks to you. When you are intentioned, when you are intentional, and I have discovered that my brothers and sisters, that be it sickness, be it death, be it hunger, be it poverty, be it happiness, be it joy, be it money, be it what? There's something that God is speaking to us. And so actually, you align yourself with God's will. And so this one, Hosea chapters 1 to 3, wayward wife, and God has had a message for him. And so will you be intentional to pick something from Hosea's way of doing things like we saw. And then the next bit is the bigger one, chapters 4 to 14. And it's now a message that comes full blast to the people of Israel. His way were the people. And God was using Hosea's life to share a message, to paint a picture of what was happening with his people. And so in Hosea chapter 4, it is the Lord chooses Israel of unrighteousness. So he says, hear the word of the Lord, all children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love and no knowledge of God in the land. And so it was this message that God wanted the message to be delivered to the people. Now, in verse 2 of chapter 4, there is a swearing, there is a lying, there is a murder, there is stealing, there is committing adultery, there is, they break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Now, when you read, is there a message here? Swearing. And swearing things that we are not going to fulfill. Lying. Murder, murder, murder. Stealing, stealing was a message. And committing adultery. And they break all bounds. And bloodshed follows bloodshed. That's verse 2. And then... Therefore, verse 3, Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in, in it anguish. And also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. Yet let no one contend, and let no one choose, for with you is my contention of priest. Now, God is speaking. Please, we cannot read this entire, but you will find actually God is contending with the people. And he specifies, he outlines the reason why he contends with them. God had asked Hosea to marry a prostitute. And through this marriage covenant, God speaks his message to his people. And so he desires that you and I pick a message from Hosea. And then as he chooses them, you read chapter 4, you read chapter 5, hear these priests. He also touches the priests 
pay attention, O house of Israel. And those of us who are in the pre in the life of priesthood, the pastors, the bishops, whoever they are, there's a message for us here. And everybody who is believer that God speaks to. And then verse chapter 6, come let us return to the Lord, is a call. There's a message there. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us that he may heal us. He may, he has struck us down and he will bind us up. This is now hope, message of hope here. And, um, but they still, the people remain unrepentant. People remain over there. And so this chapter six is usually quoted by many missionaries. Come, many, many evangelists, come, many preachers, come, let us, re let us return to the Lord. And so in Hosea's message, there is this that actually speaks. And then chapter seven, he mentions, when I restore the fortunes of my people, when I would heal Israel, the iniquity of Ephraim is revealed and the evil deeds of Samaria will, for they deal falsely, and the thief breaks in, and the bandits raid outside. So it is actually a message here, you'll discover that actually there is a lot that actually is spoken here in the book of prophet Hosea. Chapter eight, Israel will reap a whirlwind, set the trumpet, and you know, it is a sole message for here, and the people of, of Israel, may claim to know and love God, but their deeds, their deeds prove otherwise. Now, as you read on, brethren, continue chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11, and I'm going to hint in a minute, in a while, chapter 14, verse 1, where God will, will be declaring something to us as well. But look at what happens, that people confessing, otherwise and that deeds otherwise people saying one thing and doing another thing it is total hypocrisy all of us have fallen short of this saying one thing and doing another saying one thing and doing another we have fallen short and so god calls us God shows us his unconditional love. Unconditional love, even when we are wayward, we say one thing and do another. God is unconditional love. The reason why in chapter 14, verse 1, it says, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take with you words and return to the Lord, Say to him, take away all iniquity, accept what is good, and we will pay with bulls the vows of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, and we will say no more our God to the work of our hands. And so there is confessions, there are confessions being made here. Friends, in the book of Prophet Hosea, I bring this to you, that God is unconditional love is revealed. Just like he showed it through Hosea's life of marriage. One time, one after, one after, you know, go, 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 go. God keeps looking for you. God keeps waiting, his hands open, a father who waits unconditional love. And this reminds me very quickly the story of the prodigal son in chapter 15 of Luke, St. Luke's Gospel. The boy who sells everything of his, who carries away everything of his, as he leaves, his father's heart lives with him. As he stays there, the father is waiting. And as he considers return, his father is waiting. I considered this great love, abundant love of a father to his son. So is God. So is God for you and for me. And so very powerful message because despite our flaws, despite our failures, 
despite our weaknesses, despite our sinfulness, God is God. Do you remember the love, the love that Hosea had, the commitment, not giving up, God instructing him to go and he went to keep looking for this woman, no matter what, no matter where. I ask God, who is our father in heaven, to reveal this even more to you, no matter what, no matter where, no matter when. God is love, abundant and conditional. The love that embraces us in our imperfections. Friends, I've sat and thought about the men and women spoken about in the Bible. I've thought about Abraham. What good did Abraham do? But God's love went searching from his profane family, from his idolatrous family. God picked him. And so God is unconditional love, continued following him up, even with the flaws, even with weaknesses, even with you no know, deviations. God is love, continued touching around Abraham. Go to his son, Isaac. Go to his son, grandson, Jacob. And then the generation is not followed. God searches for his people. Even when they went into Egypt, God's love was there with them. Over hundreds of years that they were in there, God's love was in them, with them. Unconditional love. For them leaving, it was his love, retrieving them from Egypt, his love. And along the way, falling, flaws, weaknesses, sinning, but God's love was prominent. And so I look up and say, God, you who dealt graciously with your people, sinful as they were, but you wanted them back, you called them to come back. Will you, Lord, enable us to repent of our sins? And so that we return, we make a comeback because your love is unconditional. The love that is called agape love, without strings attached, open, come back, and I will save you. Are we tired? Are we stressed? Are we agonizing? Are we, whichever situation, God says, return, come, I will heal your sinfulness. I will heal you. I will heal you. I will heal you. And so, friends, Jose has a message, God is unconditional love, speaks. And as he spoke then, he still speaks today. What love this is. And so look at chapter 14, verse 4. And says, I will heal the apostasy. I will love them freely. I will love them freely. For my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew of Israel. To Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall take root like the trees of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out, his beauty shall be like the olive, and his fragrance like Lebanon. And he mentions many things there. This opens away for me, this opens away for you, that you better return, you better transform and get back. He says, I will heal their waywardiness. I will heal their apostasy. I will heal their sinfulness. And so God, who is in heaven, desires that a sinner dies not, but a sinner repent and return. It's a call, it's an open one. And so, we also discover that forsaking wisdom and understanding is damaging. Now, Gomer lived her life, left and went and into whoredom, but Jose had to search for her. Now, even in our life, wisdom is life. We are called upon to keep our spiritual health. Because here you are talking about apostasy. Apostasy is deviating from what God wants and doing what God does not want. Worshipping idols, doing things in a godly way. Apostasy. And uh, you will discover that there are some other terminologies like syncretism, 
things that refer to being double-minded. One leg this way, one leg this way. And which you suffer from very much. And so these issues, we are called upon to keep our spiritual health. We need to constantly nurture our relationships with God. Praise the Lord that actually you are doing it as you tune in. Praise the Lord that you are doing it as you go to church. Praise the Lord that you are doing it as you kneel down and pray. Praise the Lord that you are doing it as you repent and confess of your sins. Praise the Lord that you are doing it as you fellowship. Praise the Lord that you are doing it as you love your neighbor, as you love yourself. Praise the Lord that you are dealing away with the hypocrisy that is eating up people, saying one thing and doing another, looking another thing but looking another. Now, here is mending constantly nurturing our relationship with God. So with wisdom, with understanding, we can navigate life with ups and downs. And my prayer is that we can be able to navigate life with ups and downs. Things can come, challenges can come. Hosea shows us how he went through his own life of marriage, wayward wife and things like that. But God gave, but God's grace was sufficient. God's grace was abundant. And so wisdom does great things for us. And so friends, through repentance and confession, there will always be room to come back. There will always be room to bounce back. And I pray that the Lord enables us to bounce back. Hosea hands us a lesson. Hosea hands us hope. No dustbin, pray the Lord. Before God, there's no dustbin. Even Gomer had room in Hosea's house. See how Hosea handled betrayal. I'm praying that actually God enables you to see how you handle betrayal. Someone has betrayed you. Someone has done wrong to you. Someone has done something that you least expect. But Hosea shows us what to do. Trusting and believing in God. So return is possible. It leads to healing and prosperity. Now, friends, we find challenges in our marriage relationships. But shall we sit down? Will you sit down and think through how did Hosea navigate? That actually it was a message to the people and actually we're talking about it today. Can you imagine how many years did this man do this prophecy? Thousands of years before Christ came above after, of course, actually, after Christ came now, we're over 2,000 years, thousands of years. Praise the Lord. That actually what he did, God using him still speaks today. Now, even when he died, even when he left the scene, the message still stands. Just like the Bible talks about Abel, that even when Abel died, he still speaks today. Now, how I pray that actually our actions today will speak to somebody in the future to come. Our actions, our words, our works today, may they speak to somebody in years to come. So this is it, that the winds of wrongdoing may be so there, but true remorse and commitment to change gives a fresh start, gives a fresh start. May we get a fresh start from the Lord. Hosea was pained emotionally. Hosea was devastated. Hosea had deep personal betrayal, but he was committed to the return. Wandering away grieves God's heart, just like a wandering away son, just like a wandering away daughter grieves the parent, just like a wandering away husband grieves the wife, just like the wandering away wife grieves the husband. Now, wandering away brings grief. Shall we purpose, friends, that if there is anything that's wandering away, we bring it back. We pick up the broken pieces and bring them to the Lord. And he will heal us. And he will heal you. So, spiritual wanderings are too many these days. But there is a powerful promise waiting for us, and that is mercy and forgiveness from the Lord. It's an open door. 
and God says, come back, return, and he will heal us. So there should be a shift from betrayal to hope. Those who are specialized in betraying others, we call that actually should shift from betrayal to offering hope. Children, parents, wives, husbands, bosses, leaders, those who have specialized in betrayal, offer hope, offer hope to somebody. God is always ready to heal us. Be ready also to be healed. Be ready to reconcile. Is it possible? Those of us who are having broken relationships, is it possible? I leave it with you. Or oh, you are the verge. Is it possible? I leave it with you. And maybe this conversation can continue through interaction, interaction through many fora that we have. But can there be something good to save somebody, to save something of our marriage, of our lives? And so let us reflect and return to the Lord. We need to continue in repentance and God is ready to receive us and he's ready to receive you, he's ready to receive me and may God heal you and may God heal me. There is room to bounce back in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and we say, Amen. Amen. <music>